All right, so we're enjoying our time here in Dublin, Ireland, and in this video, we're going to show you what you can do in the city. In Dublin, walking is a great way to see the city. All right, and a good way to learn about the city here in Dublin is to take some walking tours, and that's what we're doing today, right? Right, can't you ready? wait. All right, ready. all right. Now, we actually took two walking tours the first day that we were in Dublin. The first tour was about the history of Dublin and also about the sights that you want to see, like the spire that you're seeing right in front of you. This tour lasted for a little over 90 minutes. It was very informative and showed some very interesting sights. We booked this through Viatar and I'll put the link below. Hey, that was a great tour. Learned a lot. Next tour is going to be a music tour, but we need uh, something to refresh ourselves. We're pretty hot. Believe it or not, it's really sunny today. Our second tour was a music tour. We walked the streets of Dublin with a musician, heard about the history of Irish music, and listened to some classic Irish tunes. By the end of this very entertaining tour, we were dancing in the streets. Hey, it may be a touristy thing to do, but when you come to Dublin, you have to go to the Guinness Storehouse. And that's where we're going next. We booked the Guinness tour directly online with Guinness before we had left the United States. It was about 1.5 miles away from the hotel. Some of us walked and some took the cab. A group of very friendly Canadian visitors took our video in front of the storehouse. When we arrived at noon, tickets were already sold out and they were turning people away. So make sure you get your tickets a few weeks before your planned visit. So what you'll find here is a very large display over multiple floors inside one of their original factory buildings. So the self-guided tour tells you the whole history of Guinness and the process to make it. And then at the end, you enjoy your Guinness at the gravity bar on the roof. It's pretty interesting. If you want to know about beer, this is the place to go. After checking out all the displays, we headed to the top floor. That's where you'll find the gravity bar, where you can enjoy your free pint of Guinness. From the gravity bar, as you enjoy your Guinness, you have a commanding view of the city of Dublin and the surrounding countryside. All right, so here's a hot tip. Up at the gravity bar, all they serve is Guinness, and uh, there are 13 uh, with the free ticket. But apparently you can go to level five and there's bigger selection, including ciders. So Sue doesn't like beer, so we're gonna try to head down there and uh, see if we can use our ticket. They said we could, for greater selection. So if you don't like beer and you're looking for uh, cider, head down to level five. That's right, we're able to use our free drink tickets that came with the tour to get a cider and a Guinness at the level five bar. Plus, it was less crowded down here and they had live music. Hey, so today we're doing another organized tour. We're heading to Jameson. And remember, you gotta book these organized tours online before you get here because they book up quickly. You ready to have some whiskey? As long as we're gonna go shopping after. We'll see about that. We walked to the Jameson Distillery, which was about 0.8 miles from the Castle Hotel. After a good half hour walk, we made it to Jameson. 
second that we made it, as you can see up front, they have a really cool bar, the J&J &J bar, and I think we get a free drink here um, after the tour and after the tasting. And your tickets, you check in straight ahead over there, but again, make sure you get your tickets. I'd get them online before you get here, because sometimes the place does get busy. This was a fully guided tour where we learned all about the history of the Jameson family and their whiskey making process. We then enjoyed a tasting of their three most popular Irish whiskies. I thought that their black barrel on the right was the smoothest. Once the tour was over, a free drink was provided. Most in our group enjoyed this tour better than the one at Guinness. Oh, and in their factory store, there's a bottle of Jameson whiskey on sale for 6,000 euros. So we've been showing you a lot of organized things you can do here in Dublin, but today we're going to show you uh, some places you can walk to on your own. And we're going to start by walking to O'Connell Street. The Castle Hotel, where we're staying, is one block north of O'Connell Street. We're walking south to begin our own walking tour to explore the city. As we walk down towards O'Connell Street, you can see how busy this city is. Lots of buses, lots of people, all times of the day and night. Really busy. So what you're looking at here is the north end of O'Connell Street. And uh, O'Connell Street is named after Daniel O'Connell, who was the first Irishman who was allowed to sit in the British Parliament. Because back in the day, only the Protestants could sit in the parliament. So the first thing we're going to show you, and one of the things you should check out when coming to Dublin, is the general post office here on O'Connell Street. That's where the Easter Monday uprising occurred in 1916, where the people of uh, Dublin got together and fought the British for five days, trying to take over the city from British rule. It failed and the uh, revolutionary people were uh, put in jail and many of them were executed. But you can still see the bullet holes on the post office the, where the fighting took place. So let's go down and take a look. And this is the general post office where the proclamation of Irish independence was read in 1916 in an attempt to free Ireland from British rule and it's right on O'Connell Street and if you look closely you can see the bullet holes that are still in the columns today from the time of that uh, uprising I guess you could call these the scars of discontent now although that has been the traditional teaching that these are the bullet holes from the Easter Monday uprising some have questioned whether that is really true True or not, they remain a symbol of Ireland's struggle for independence from British rule. Now right out in front of the uh, post office, you'll see the uh, spire, which is right here on O'Connell Street. So that spire was erected at the site of where there used to be a monument of a, a British naval officer who was a hero. But that monument was blown up by the IRA back in the 60s, and then the spire was uh, installed in place of the statue, and I guess it's the Spire of Hope, um, but the nickname around here is it's called the Stiletto in the Ghetto. As you continue walking south down O'Connell Street, you'll find the statue of the man himself, Daniel O'Connell. So uh, here's the statue <coughs> of O'Connell, right here by the River Liffey on O'Connell Street. And if you look carefully, let me show you, you can also see bullet holes in the statue. The bullet hole in the statue is from the 1916 Easter Monday uprising that we just spoke about when we're at the post office. Now we're going to continue south over the River Liffey and uh, show you what's down over there. That's where you're going to find Trinity College and lots of other things you can walk to and see on your own. As we walked over the River Liffey, we started to work up an appetite, and fish and chips were on our mind. 
All right, so when you go south of the river, head over to Christ Church and um, look for Leo's, which is the oldest takeout fish and chip place in Dublin. And I hear it's a favorite spot for Bruce Springsteen to get his fish and chips. Leo's fish and chips were the best we had during our eight day stay in Dublin, and their portions are generous. Sue and I ordered one order of fish and chips to share. So the idea is get your fish and chips and head over to Christ Church, sit on the grass in the sun. It's been beautiful, no rain, and enjoy your fish and chips. What you're about to see is one order of fish and chips. As I said, it was delicious. And make sure you ask for salt and vinegar on it. Now they also have chicken and onion rings. All right, here's a hot tip for you. They also have chicken, but they also have onion rings. And these are actually real onion rings. They're not the stuff you normally get at the restaurant. These are freshly made, and uh, they taste delicious. So if you like onion rings, ask for onion rings with your fish and chips. Now after lunch, we headed to the famous Molly Malone statue. After a short eight-minute walk, we found Molly. Molly Malone. Dublin, oh, I love this one. Fair city, where the girls are so pretty. I first set my eyes on sweet Molly. As she wheeled her wheelbarrow to street sprawl. As you can see, everyone comes here to take pictures and to look at Molly. She's very famous here in Dublin. Now, not too far from Molly Malone is Trinity College. That's where you can find the Book of Kells. But if you want to see it, make your reservations online early before you get here. Now, we just walked in to take a look at the campus. It was pretty spectacular, and it was founded back in 1592. Well, this is a cool place to visit. Now we're going to Grafton Street, which is supposedly the shopping center of Dublin. It's only 0.3 miles away from Trinity College. So this is Grafton Street, the center of shopping here in Dublin. It's just a stone's throw from Trinity University where we just were. And we're gonna take a look and see what kind of shops they have here. If you need something, Grafton Street should have it including high-end merchandise. So follow Grafton Street all the way to the south end and you'll find St. Stephen's Park, very well known here in Dublin. St. Stephen's Green is a public park located right at the end of Grafton Street. It's a very popular park for tourists and locals. Now when you're here, you're not supposed to feed the birds, but I think these visitors didn't see the sign. So after visiting the park here, St. Stephen's Park, head back down Grafton Street and look for Murphy's ice cream. It's the best ice cream in all of Ireland. That's what we hear. When you're in Dublin, you have to try Murphy's ice cream. It's homemade with some great flavors. Oh, welcome to Murphy's. So do you like it? It's delicious. So we have whiskey, chocolate, and caramel honey. A cut or Honeycomb. 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 Honeycomb caramel. Caramel. Honeycomb caramel. Good. good. Good stuff. The ice cream was good, but not as good as Leopold's ice cream in Savannah, Georgia. So next time you're in Savannah, check it out. All right, so when you're south of the river, other things you can see are museums, and the museums in Dublin are apparently free, like this one. So something else you can do is there are sightseeing buses, 
There's trams you can take around the city. There's hop-on, hop-off buses. Lots of options. And if you're in the mood for shopping, check out Carol's Gifts. They have locations scattered around Dublin and have a great selection of t-shirts, sweatshirts, and the like at reasonable prices. Now as you're walking around south of the river, make sure you check out Dublin Castle. We're going to go inside right now. This was actually a castle at one time. Now it's used as administrative offices for the city of Dublin. It's got to be several hundred years old. But you can take tours here if you want. But most people just come to uh, go to the courtyard and take a look at the courtyard. Now we're heading from Dublin Castle and it's a short walk to St. Patrick's Cathedral that way. St. Patrick's Cathedral is a Roman Catholic cathedral that was founded in 1191. It is currently the National Cathedral of the Church of Ireland. And you can take self-guided audio tours inside. Let's take a look. Okay, so the way it works, it's $8 for seniors and students, maybe a little more for younger adults. And you get an audio book, so to speak, and self-guided tour uh, to learn all about St. Patrick's Cathedral. So after walking around south of the river in Dublin, you're probably working up an appetite. So head on over to O'Neill's Pub, which is located right near the Molly Malone statue. Here you'll likely find some old friends waiting to throw back a pint with you. And as in every pub we've been to in Dublin, the selection of beer and cider on tap seems endless. And if you're hungry, there's more than just beer. All right, so when you're in Ireland, make sure you order these dishes. You got Guinness stew. You have, what does Pat have? Cottage pie. Cottage pie. Cottage Another pie. cottage pie. Mm -hmm. With a side of potatoes. The side of potatoes, <laughs> you don't have enough. So that completes our comprehensive tour of what to see and do in Dublin. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. Until next time, safe travels.